Is it really possible to solve the reading and writing fill in the blanks question in just one minute? Watch this. This is about automobile engines, kind of heat engine, generate force by dash fuel. Burn fuel is not. We need a continuous tense. Generating, combusting and heating. Combusting is the best answer because the context is giving you enough hints that it is a, about combustion engines. The next one, the dash of hot gases and pressurized gases. So when the engine is heated, the gases expand. So expansion of gases is also a collocation. And that's how I selected this answer. The force is typically applied. Force is applied is also a collocation in a process where chemical energy is dashed to mechanical energy. So is dash. Convert is in present tense. It is not the answer. We need something in the past tense. So convert, which one is the closest to convert? Transformed is the word which is closest to convert. Transformed from one form to the other. Mixed and evaporated does not make sense in this context. And that's how I can eliminate it and solve it in one minute. Now you are just one video away from knowing that. You just saw how it is done. Your current methods are slowing you down. But there is a better way to solve the reading and writing fill in the blanks faster. A lot faster. Sab uthake, hack do and follow this. The fastest way to improve and fastest way to solve. Stay tuned and find out how it is done. Hello everyone. Anurag, your PT expert from Edutrainix. I am back with a super demanding video on a topic which many of you find absolutely difficult to solve. It is definitely possible to solve the reading and writing fill in the blanks under one minute. But it also depends on the length or the complexity of the text that is given to you. So maybe two minutes. But if you are taking around four minutes to solve them, then you need to subscribe now with the bell icon so that you don't miss out on the videos that we share that can completely shape your PT reading and writing fill in the blanks preparation. And in the end, I will also share you the link to download all the materials discussed in this video. So watch this video till the end. Every minute is worth. Is it really possible to solve the reading and writing fill in the blanks question in under one minute? Absolutely yes, I just showed you. But the main question is why still 90% of the people fail in the reading writing fill in the blanks question? I am going to show you an approach to solve these questions in a fast manner. And not only that, I am also going to show you how to develop the skills quickly which are required for the reading writing fill in the blanks questions. So firstly, let's talk about what is the reason of failure and why 90% of the people are failing in this task. The one and the most important reason is they don't understand the meaning of the words. If you don't know the meaning, you can't understand how to solve the questions. And that's one of the most important reason why people are failing. If you don't know the meaning, you also don't know how the word is used. So that means you don't know the collocations. Again, another reason for failure. And the last one is grammar. If you don't know the grammar technique or the shortcut techniques, then you are still not able to answer the questions, even half of it. Now, Balakrishna was one of our students who had similar problems and he implemented the full-fledged approach that I'm going to share you shortly. He improved drastically. Okay, so what he was doing is he was putting too much time thinking about what is the meaning of the words, how is the grammar used and then in the end he was not able to complete the reading section. And the reason behind it, failure in reading, writing, fill in the blanks questions. Too much time spent. See his performance below. You can see in the time graph that he used to take on an average four minutes minimum to solve one question. And, and that too, his accuracy is not reflecting that much time he spent. So it's not a great accuracy, still in the mediocre level. So now let's talk about how we should start attacking this question. The first two things that you need to develop is vocabulary. And why I'm showing you that, I'm shortly going to show you some real PT exam questions. And if you know, or I know the collocations and the vocabulary, straight away we can solve the questions. Vocabulary and collocations are the key. If you have sufficient time to prepare for the exam, then you can take a slow approach, which is the diligent approach. Reading a lot. I'm also going to discuss with you the PT's favorite website, where it extracts the question materials for the exam questions. Hold on for it. But what you can do is start reading. 
Reading every day helps you to understand different types of words that are there. And also a vocabulary list. You can download the vocabulary list from any website. We also provide that when you enroll with us. So that's slow and steady approach. Also wins the race. But the fast approach is I'm going to share with you shortly. Just hold on a little bit. For the collocation, you can start with the official collocation word list. Good base to begin your collocations. Of course, it is not an exhaustive list. That means not all the questions will have collocations from there, but it is a good start. So that's what you can do. And again, the fast method I will be discussing with you shortly, but let's do some exam question and you will see how these things help you directly to solve the questions. I don't even need to read the whole text. Let's have a look. The UW course descriptions are dash regularly. Updated, retrieved, responded, limited. Website updated regularly, course materials updated regularly, descriptions updated regularly, very common collocation. Next one, even an easier one. Change without what? Course catalog are subject to change without notice. Change without notice. Again, a very common collocation. And, and do not constitute and dash between the University of Washington and the student. So we are talking about two parties and between two parties, there has to be a some kind of agreement. So agreement between is the correct collocation. And if I know it, you know it, you can solve it easily. The last one, student should assume the responsibility of dash the appropriate academic unit or advisor. So what do you do with an advisor? Do you confer or deliberate? You consult with an advisor. Now here, there are two words, consult and consulting. Which one will you choose? Now here, grammar can help you. Let's have a look. Students should assume the responsibility of doing something with the advisor. It is talking about a continuous tense here. So that is why consulting is the right answer here. Now you know everything about collocation. It's time to move to the next important thing, which is grammar. Grammar is also really, really helpful. I will show you a real exam question shortly. And also I'm going to share you five most popular grammar techniques that can be implemented on these questions and can help you solve these questions faster. What are the things that we need to identify are the grammar rules, which will be covered in the shortcuts that I'm going to discuss and the grammar patterns and the grammar patterns because Understanding the rules, shortcuts, patterns, everything works synchronously. Now, there are two approaches again to improve your grammar. Either you start learning from a book or if you are attending a live classes, you can learn it from your teacher. But there is also a fast method. And again, I'm going to share with you shortly what they are. So before that, I'm going to share you the five shortcut techniques, very popular ones. The first one is what comes after singular noun? A verb with S comes, that means a plural verb. And the opposite happens with plural noun. A verb without S comes, so a singular verb comes. This table is showing you exactly that. I, we, you, they is regarded as plural. So that is why you see everywhere it is using singular verb. We drive, you drive, you don't drive, I don't drive, like that. He, she, it is considered as singular and with he, she, it drives is used, but there is a catch exception. If you use does in the sentence, then the verb again reverts back to singular. He does not drive. She does not drive. He does drive or do or does he drive. So in that case is the only exception. The second grammar technique is the most popular one, which I always make it in my video and share it. What comes after has, have, had, have been, had been, anything. Always verb three comes, which is past participle. So if you see these words near to the blanks, straight away, look for verb three. See some examples. He has eaten his food. They have done the work. Tom had seen the movie. It has been mentioned in the book. Everywhere, verb three very popular technique and very useful in the exam. The third one is what comes after is, was, are, where, am. So there are two possibilities here, either verb three, which is past participle or verb one plus ing, which is present continuous. 
let's look at some examples again he is called as the king of good times he was thrown they were given the assignment it was a disturbing scene he is running eating drinking sleeping and so on so you see there are two possibilities and in different scenarios the and in different scenarios each of the appropriate ones are used the fourth one is again really important what comes after adverb so adverb is something that describes a verb or an adjective so which is why it precedes which is why it follows the verb or comes after the verb and it's very easy to find the adverbs any word ending with ly will be an adverb 100% but for adjectives and nouns there is also a pattern it's not accurate 100% of time but most of the times cut that but many a times the word ending with shun is a noun or when or word ending with if is an adjective so let's see some examples he writes slowly we are eating slowly i am speaking clearly speaking clearly verb and adverb the last grammar technique is also really really important and this is quite evident in the official collocation word list where you can see 90% of the combination is this adjective and noun adjective noun you can open it and see it yourself so adjective some so 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 adjective is something that describes a noun and it always comes before the noun in this case a great city an unusual talent a creative idea so noun is person place thing or an idea so an adjective describes a noun that's why it comes before that now i'm going to show you a real exam question and we will implement these grammar techniques to solve the questions straight away very straight forward i'm not going to read the text because i am just looking for grammar patterns here some have dash now after has have had verb 3 comes right so only look for the option that is verb 3 in this case estimated so that is the correct answer here the next one it was based on 22000 dash sent to former graduate students 22000 is a large number several numerous so that means we need a plural word here now let's find out which words are plural question questionnaires is the only plural word here and that is the best answer here the remaining are all in singular form sent to former graduate students who were now where now if you remember there are two possibilities either ing or verb 3 now let's see what is the context here that will help you decide were enrolled in 24 universities and it seemed to show many past fears to be crownless or were enrolling in 24 universities we are not talking about a process that is happening right now so ing will not work in this case enrolled will be the correct answer and you see how easy it is to solve the questions firstly using collocation and now using grammar now for the last part of the video it is something that you have been anxiously waiting for and that is what is the fastest way to improve these skills especially the vocabulary which takes a lot of time normally but i am going to show you the fast approach what you can do is start with the prediction files and not just solve the questions and don't understand anything start with last 3 to 6 months of prediction files whatever options you see whatever words you see you start understanding and adding it to your own vocabulary list and we have seen a lot of words have been repeated i can show you a video clip that i am searching for one particular word in only one file and you can see how many times the single word has been repeated in the fill in the blanks question have a look so i am on the edutrainix platform and then i just click on any of the prediction files and i just want to show you how the different words are repeated so if i just search for a word in this case determine and just have a look in the fill in the blanks questions one another place again in another fill in the blanks question another repetition and another repetition so you see how many times one single word is repeated in the same prediction file you can imagine how many time different words are repeated in different prediction files so that is 
what I wanted to show you in this clip. So now you see what I'm trying to say here, the words do get repeated. So whatever questions you are solving from there, make sure you, you memorize it, you understand the words and not only just words, how they are used with other words, that is collocation. So, so many number of times when you will solve the questions in these prediction files, you will find that these words collocate with some other words. So that should be grasped in your head. And the next time when you see that word, straight away you will be able to solve it. And it works. Balakrishna did the same thing. Now, talking about a video-based approach, you can also use that. We do share monthly vocabulary videos. We extract the same number of words that are repeating in the prediction files and give it to you in the form of video. If you want to do that, you can watch those words and learn from there. And also the grammar shortcut videos, which are evergreen and very popular because these are the shortcuts that can help you to solve the question in the quickest amount of time. Time to look at Balaji's final score. What happened after he implemented this approach and how much success he was able to achieve. Seen the graph before he was taking more than four minutes to solve. And now he averages below two minutes and his accuracy has also improved a lot. From the time and the accuracy graph, you can see that. Now I'm going to share you the last part of this video before I can give you a full-fledged plan how you can use this approach that I just shared, the fast track one. But first, let me show you a context-based question, which is something a little bit difficult. Why? Because collocation techniques don't work here. Grammar techniques don't work here. <clears throat> Why? Because collocation techniques don't work here. Grammar techniques don't work here. What works is the vocabulary, which is why I told you before, it's a single point of failure, single reason of failure for many, many people. If you understand the words, you can still solve the question, even if it is a difficult one. Let's do the example together and see what I'm trying to say here. Automobile engines are a kind of heat engines that generate force by dash fuel mixed with an oxidizer in combustion chamber. Combustion engines, combustion. Many times combustion is used here. So we are talking about something related to heat engine where the fuel is mixed up and then it is burned basically. Now if you see burn is an option, but it is a trap. You see the remaining three words are in continuous tense. So this word has deliberately been placed so that you just fall into the trap. Now you should be careful in these scenarios. What is the word closest related to burn? In this case, combusting and that is the correct answer. The next one is within these internal combustion engines, the dash of hot and pressurized gases, dash of gases, they are burnt and then something happened to the gases. Expansion, enlargement, amplification, diversification. Diversification is not in the context here. Amplification is related to music, light or sound waves. So we're not talking about that. Enlargement is also wrong because enlargement is for solid things or some things which we can see enlarging. Expansion of gases is the correct word here and also a collocation. The next one is, the next one is, the force is typically applied to turbine blades and piston in a process where chemical energy is dashed to mechanical energy. Chemical energy is converted to mechanical energy. Now, again, you may fall into the trap. You see the word convert here without even using your common sense related to grammar. Straight away, you will select this answer and fall into the trap. See, again, three of the words have been put in past tense to give you a hint that this answer is not correct. This is the odd one out. So don't fall into this trap. Now, which word is closely related to convert? Evaporated? No. Mixed? No. Transformed? Yes. Transformed or converted? One and the same thing. So now you see how strong. So now you see what is the power of having a good vocabulary is. Understanding the context, solve the questions. The last part. And in the end, now I want to discuss a foolproof plan, how you can implement this approach. So reading every day is still a part of your learning. Now, this is the website that I was talking about, sciencedaily.com, PT's favorite website to extract questions and materials. Cut that last part. 
PT's favorite website to extract the materials for the questions. So definitely have a read from there. And then from the prediction files, you should do around 20 questions on a daily basis. Each of the question will have around five blanks. Each of the five blanks will have around four options. So five into four, 20 words you can learn from one single question. And 20 into 20 is 400 words. You can learn from just 20 questions. And many words do get repeated. So see how much you have time left and how much you can time and how much you can put the time in your preparation. So depending on that, you can either reduce the number of questions or increase the number of questions. But in the end, everything has to go in your head. You should absorb it. Don't just solve the questions and forget the words. Then it will not work. You have to understand the words. And next time when you see, you should be able to remember the words. Not only the words, it's usage as well. And then the monthly vocabulary videos, the grammar shortcut videos is also going to help you. Together, this approach is bound to work for you. It worked for Balakrishna and many other students. This is the fast track method to solve the reading, writing, fill in the blanks. You can do it. But I'm sure that now you know how to solve the reading and writing fill in the blanks questions quickly. That too very quickly with the help of grammar and collocation techniques. Even if you are unable to do it in one minute, don't worry. You can take a little bit more time and still manage to complete the reading section. Before you go, if you don't know about the new formula to solve the reading fill in the blanks questions, then watch this video. 90% of the people don't know about this and fail their PT reading test. Keep watching Edu 10 and I will soon be back with another great video on PT. See you.